The last data frame manipulation we will look at is two different ways to combine two data frames. The first is to concatenate the data frames. This is something that we can do if we have two data frames that have exactly the same column labels. In that case, we can stack one on top of each other to create a longer data frame. In our first example, we'll look at two data frames that provide some information about authors. We have assigned their Wikidata ID as their unique row label index. Because these two tables share the same columns and indexes, we can combine them by using concatenate. First, I'm going to create a completely newly named data frame called Authors that will combine the two data frames and assign a new name to it. If I want, I can reassign the combined data frame to one of the original names, in which case I'm effectively adding the second one onto the first one. In the examples above, I assigned a row label index, the Wikidata ID. However, if I don't do that, Pandas will assign an automatic numeric index to each row. That gets a little bit weird when I concatenate them. You'll see that each of the three tables that I've joined together starts over again with the same sequence of integers. If I want to avoid this and have it number them all sequentially as they're added together, I can use an ignore index equals true argument, and then the previously assigned indices will be ignored and it will renumber them starting with zero. The other way that I can combine two tables is to do what is known as a join. This is when you join two tables side by side by matching up their row label indices. In this case, we use the on equals argument to indicate which of the columns in the two tables we will use to do the matching. Now one of the issues with doing a join is what happens if the row label indices don't exactly match up. And there's two different approaches that we can take. One is what's known as an inner join. In the case of an inner join, if the rows don't match up with anything in the other table, they're dropped. So in this example, only rows 1 and 2 match, so they are the only ones found in the output table. An outer join includes all rows, whether they match with the other table or not. And in this case, if a particular row in one table is not found in the other table, then the columns in that other table are filled in with NAs. Let's imagine that we want to calculate the per capita energy consumption instead of the overall energy consumption. In that case, we're going to need to combine data about the state populations with the sector energy use data that we were playing around with before. Here's a table that includes the populations in the year 2020 along with the state names. The table we were using before has the state names with the CO2 production by sector. The state names in the first table are in a column called name with capital letters. In the second table, they're called state. So if I want to merge these two tables, I have to indicate what is the left and right tables column that I want to use for the join. So in the merge command, I specify the two tables and the columns to do the merging, and then finally whether I want to do an inner join or an outer join. So we'll start with an outer join. In this case, if I look carefully, I can see that Puerto Rico, which is included in the population table, is not included in the energy use by sector table, so those columns got filled in with NANs. If I change this to an inner join, then I'll notice that there is one less row, 50 instead of 51, and the Puerto Rico value is missing 